Yeah, welcome back to another Ask Mark question. I'm really happy with how this series is turning out, getting a lot of good feedback. So uh, thanks for all the questions, people. Um, first, this one comes from a guy named Steve. He says, Mark, I've heard of virtual ground for filament wiring. Can you explain what that's all about? When should it be used? Uh, thanks, Steve. It's a really good question, Steve. And we covered this a little bit in our single-ended 807 build. Uh, sort of, kind of. So well, let's take a look at what we're talking about here. Okay, pretty uh, generic uh, tube amplifier power supply here. You got your AC input here on the front end, 120 volts or whatnot. Then you got your secondary, which your primary here, um, high voltage, maybe uh, 380 volts uh, each side of the center tap or something. Then you'd have a 5 volt filament winding to heat up this uh, 5AR4 or 5U4. Um, uh, rectifier tube and then you'll have a 6.3 volt winding or multiple 6.3 volt windings and they go off and feed the various tubes um, the filaments of tubes so you'll end up daisy chaining um, or putting in parallel the filaments of multiple tubes and here it's telling you hey this would six, feed the 6N1Ps, the KT88s, uh, 6S and 7s 12AX7s, whatever, um, but you're just kind of feeding them with an AC voltage directly to the filaments and then you daisy chain those over and over. That's typically what you would see. So here's a couple other ways you can go about it. The first one would be you would kind of uh, come off your secondary that would go to the tubes here, the 6.3 volt um, winding. And you would go from one leg of that to the other leg of that with two, and uh, I'll say 100K ohm resistors here. I've seen 56K ohm resistors used. And you kind of uh, find a point in between those two, and you kind of take that middle point to ground. So what you've actually done at that point is you've actually created um, what's called either an artificial ground or an artificial center tap between these two. And so instead of having uh, 6.3 volts with respect to ground, kind of what you've got is two 3.15 volt um, signals with respect to ground. And the polarity of those, they kind of cancel out. So it gets rid of some of the hum that you would feed to your tubes and ultimately uh, get into the sound of your audio. So I see this top one done quite a bit on single-ended amplifiers. There's actually a uh, single-ended.com single is a website. It's a Japanese website. Um, it's got a good bit of English writing on it, but um, a lot of good single-ended schematics on that site. I study that site uh, constantly. I always learn something when I go there. And because um, these, these Japanese, Chinese guys are really into this single-ended stuff. And... Um, but at any rate, um, I see this used on there a lot. And, you, and like I said, you typically see this for preamp driver tubes, things of that nature, not so necessarily so much uh, power or output tubes. But it doesn't hurt. Uh, you can see, like if you were running KT88s on the output, 6.3-volt uh, heaters, you could feed them right off of this same little heater wiring here. Um, the next thing that I see used um, about as much um, is what I would call elevating kind of the virtual ground um, to around 20 volts. Sometimes you see it 30 volts. Um, but what they do here is you take that same little center tap point right here and you bring it down and you tie it via a uh, just a little resistor divider network here that you would build. You would tie it to the B plus. So instead of the center of these um, kind of the center tap here that we've created the virtual center tap of this 6.3 volt AC sitting at zero volts uh, DC, we're giving it an offset, a DC offset, of typically around 20 or 30 volts. And you'll need to do the math to figure out R1 and R2. I'll give you an example. Let's say R1 was maybe, uh, or your B plus was maybe uh, 300 volts, and R1 was uh, 280K, and this one was 20K then you would end up with, um, you know, around uh, maybe uh, 40 volts right there sitting on that. So, um, yeah, or actually 20 volts, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, you'd end up with 20 volts sitting right here. And then the other, thing I sip, ugh, the other thing I typically see done here is a pretty uh, high-grade capacitor here, typically 47 microfarad is what I see, kind of strapped between it and ground, and that's just to give a little... Uh, 
kind of rectification and smoothing of this uh, center voltage here, um, even coming off the B+. Plus. Um, and this B+, plus where you're picking that up, would typically be on the other side of. So typically you'd have like a, uh, a CLC or a CRC network before that. Um, you typically pick this up right before you would go to the... Uh, to the actual output transformers, uh, which then feed to the plates of your tubes. So get it on the other side of the rectification. One thing you want to pay attention to and look up the tubes you're feeding, make sure you don't violate VHK, which that would be heater to cathode voltage maximum. And the other thing you want to do just to keep from drawing too much current here is you want to keep R2 down here somewhere below 100K. If you start getting that number up, then you're uh, starting to pull a good bit of current here. Um, and one other thing I have seen done, and I think they, I can't remember exactly what they call this, a humdinger or something like that, but instead of using uh, 200 ohm um, resistors here or right here, you might would actually put a pot here. So tie one, in, one side of a 500 ohm pot to one of these leads and another side of the 500 ohm pot to the other lead, and then take the center wiper and tie it to ground. So then you've got an adjustable um, and you could adjust this, uh, the, the, um, the center tap to be slightly off one side or slightly off the other side. And you can adjust that to uh, get the minimal amount of hum that you possibly could um, feeding the output tube. So it'd be a little bit of an ear uh, adjustment after the fact. But hopefully this makes sense, helps you understand a little bit. Oh yeah, the reason you might want to float 20 volts above ground, um, getting the actual... Um, Getting your heater voltages away from ground is typically a good thing. You kind of get away from the noise floor and you get up um, DC above that a little bit so you don't pick up so much uh, uh, kind of stray things being either inducted or uh, capacitively picked up into the circuit. So, so but when the last part was when should it be used? You know, I might would recommend using this anytime you're building a uh, single-ended amplifier that's not... Um, a directly heated cathode. So like if you're running KT88s, EL34s, uh, KT66, 6560s, etc. for your output tubes. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope this makes sense.